Hey, Monkey Nation, listen, uh, we've been talking about this for a while now, and uh, if you missed out on the last deal where you got $200 worth of free gear, check out uh, what we've got going on right now. This is over at monkeyworksprep.com. You'll get a three-month kit, and you'll save $200 right now, and uh, that will not last forever, but for every three-month kit you buy, you get $200 off, and that's the current special that's going. And uh, remember, monkeyworksprep.com. Jump over there and get it now and get that uh, food that you need to get you and your family through uh, the crisis that is coming. Uh, it will not last forever. I'm telling you, when you need it, it's going to be hard to get. Uh, so don't wait. All right. That is monkeyworksprep.com. And uh, you will be thankful that you did this. God bless. Monkey out. All right. Hey, welcome, folks. Mill Spec Ops Monkey here. This is going to be your sit rep. It's about 11 a.m. Central Time coming to you from the great state of Texas. And it is, wow, June 5th, 2023. And so I think we're down to around 15, 16 days until uh, spring is gone, which means that uh, the whole spring offensive, if it's going to happen, it's uh, going to happen here pretty soon. Now, we're going to look at a couple different factors as we get into this uh, as to why I think maybe uh, there's more than just exercises going on and some posturing taking place over in the region it, you know, we typically like to call things an exercise when we are, in fact, uh, really getting ready to get jiggy. So let's do this. Uh, we jump over here to our mini board and uh, we're sitting at, let's see, 181. So it's kind of a light day, but keep in mind, I've taken 50 trainers out of that picture right there. So uh, let's do this, though. We are going to look at the tankers. We'll just uh, pull up the Ah, uh, let's see. I'm going to reshuffle the deck here so that I've got a good... So that's going to be your... Oh, we're not seeing any Pegasus aircraft up. All right, so that's just going to be your KC-135s that are up right now. Looking for DC-10s and not seeing those either. So just, just the old KCs are up. Looks like uh, kind of centered here in the middle of the United States. A little bit of stuff out here on the East Coast. We're going to talk more also about this whole uh, incident that took place over the weekend with a Cessna 6, uh, sorry, C560 aircraft and uh, what that's all about. So just uh, that'll be at the very end, though. So just uh, sit tight. We'll get to it. In the meantime, let's go take a look at our watch list, see what we've got going on. What's shaking and baking here on the watch list? It looks like, uh, as always, survey planes. And uh, we do have a couple there. That's going to be Homeland Security and then one of the little gray birds, uh, Phoenix Airs. But again, uh, and Mill Intel Balloon on the move. Looks like we've still got the two up that are moving around. The others, notice they have disappeared. They're still up. And then, of course, more survey flights. More survey flights. Bing, 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 bing. Survey says more survey flights everywhere. That's uh, kind of the flavor of the morning. And keep in mind, that's happening now, too, by the way, as we speak. All right, there's a little drone for you. And, oh, strange survey flight. Let me get over here. We've got some uh, B703s, a couple R135s that are up. Look like they're just doing a little bit of their usual legwork in the region. It is quite uh, light and fluffy this morning, though, over Europe. Not seeing too much in terms of the watch list as we back down. Now, let's get into the Intel aircraft, and that also is a little light. Now, this is the last three days, and you're going to notice just uh, the usual areas right there next to Moldova, looking out over Crimea. Uh, you know, it's Belarus right there. And then we get up here and notice uh, to the southern side of Kaliningrad. And then right here, Belarus, pro-Russia, and uh, looks like we've got some stuff going on in Sweden, too. That is going to do it for that aspect. Now, let's talk survey flights for a minute. Uh, Portugal looks like they are continuing on with theirs. And looks like uh, to the east of Turin, uh, still got some activity going on. That's every day, folks. Every day. All right. Belgium, uh, all the way over to Luxembourg, up to the Netherlands. Denmark is actually getting a little bit um, uh, more legwork going on there to the north and to the south. Uh, actually, it even looks like it may have been over near, near Hamburg. And then this one, I'm still kind of, I don't think that's a survey flight. I think I've got that built in uh, to the mix. I think that's our, our little drone or another drone flight that's up looking at the ships off of Tripoli. 
over the water. They do it on a regular basis. And yeah, probably because people like to bring nuclear material into that region. Then we get down under here in Australia. And um, yeah, Perth, the center there. Get all the way up here near Darwin and then down off to the right side. We've got it uh, in Brisbane, north of Brisbane, down near Newcastle, Sydney, Melbourne. Yes. And a little bit in Tasmania there as well. That uh, I didn't clearly go down and look, but uh, if you happen to be on a fat income holiday there, that is going on over your head. And then we get over here to the U.S. and notice we've got... Um, uh, a lot of transitions, actually. See, I'm moving the big, longer lines. That's just, other again, headed to new locations to continue on with the surveys. Now, the flight levels over the weekend were down about 174. Uh, but you can see Canada is still very active. And right there, even along the border, Washington State, Portland, uh, Sacramento, all the way down the whole coastline of California into Vegas, Phoenix, Arizona area, Santa Fe, New Mexico, Houston, San Antonio, all getting busy. And so that is going to be your survey flights. Again, 174 last three days. Uh, we are well over 8,000 plus uh, and growing. So we'll continue to watch that. Okay. All right. Let's get back over here to our mini and uh, let's start getting into some of the news cycle we've got happening out there today. We're going to start off with flashbang and uh looks like he slips into his his britches around 10 a.m that is uh you know he may not um he may just actually be pantless running around the white house you know uh the dude is definitely <laughs> uh yeah okay anyway uh, and let's see here he he this evening at 4 30 p.m he gets to welcome the kansas city chiefs to the white house to celebrate their champion season and victory in the Super Bowl. All right. It has only been, what, five, six months since then. So, okay, let's uh, move on over here to this side of it. Now, you may remember that the comment was made by Flashbang that when oil got down to $72 per barrel, uh, that we would basically start to replenish the strategic oil reserve uh, here in the United States, and it has nowhere near gotten to that level. In fact, if we had to buy it now, uh, it, it would be astronomically <laughs> expensive. So, uh, but this is again looking like other uh, reiterating calls for hundred dollar oil as Saudi Arabia cuts production yet again. And this is intentional. They know that we're trying to make our buy if it gets down to a certain level, and they're just keeping it high. So we can't get to it. Don't think for a minute that this is not all part of their plan, as well as all the other nonsense going on around the world, like this, for example. Ireland actually is mulling over plans to kill 200,000 cows because of their flatulence. You can't make this stuff up. Think about the amount of families 200,000 cows would feed. Uh, you know... This is just getting nuttier by the day. They're tar starting to uh, mandate uh, who can grow food at their, at their private residence uh, throughout California and other places. You've got to actually submit to you know, local authorities and letting them know that you're growing uh, food. The, the laws and the things that are coming around, they're talking about 13 countries now have decided that they're going to just abolish their farming stuff, which is... It just makes zero sense. Uh, you know, it, it's it, 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 what really gets you is the fact that they are pushing us eating bugs. Okay. They're taking away 200,000 cows because of their flatulence in Ireland. And then they'll turn right back around and tell you, hey, you're going to need to eat worms and bugs and, and grubs and all the other stuff. Uh, but you'll like it. Um, this is not, this is demonic, folks, honestly. This, this is just straight up. Uh, anti God, anti uh, just everything. This is just straight up ridiculous. So I'm just going to move on from there. <laughs> but hey, let's talk about what's happening with our dollar. So it looks like uh, we had a nice little free fall here this morning and just a little while ago, around 10 a.m. I don't know what happened in the news cycle, but uh, it started to uh, free fall. And then here it has the uh, what we call the dead cat bounce. 
and landed on its feet, clearly. Uh, it's still at 103, which is strong compared to where it was in recent uh, weeks. But uh, that is where we are this morning. We'll continue to watch that. And then let's take a look at the immigration flights this morning as well. Uh, you can see a lot of things headed out as we get down a little further. I say a lot of things. Two flights, actually. <laughs> uh, so really not a lot of things, but at least they're headed south. That's the good news. This one's coming from Alexandria, which is a 72-hour holding facility. It's a.k.a. a third-party jail and uh, that one's headed down to Bogota, Colombia. And then this one from Laredo headed down to San Pedro. Uh, that uh, also headed south of the border. So it's good they're headed south, but uh, we typically see a lot more flights than just that. So we're probably in between uh, takeoff and landing cycle. Okay. All right. So here we go. Bitdefender looks like the U.S. is getting hammered. Uh, we've got some internal stuff. This is a really strong line. That's headed uh, from what looks to be our central, normal central pop, as well as this one under the attacks. Uh, what's going on here looks to be down towards Atlanta, Georgia area, uh, but um, pretty active, pretty heavy. As always, U.S. ranks number one with uh, <laughs> respect to cyber attacks. Yeah, not where you really want to be. Okay, let's talk what's going on here. We've got uh, a multitude of different Exercises happening right now. This is all starting to take place now. This is about to get really interesting. Uh, and as we go through a couple of these these uh, news uh, articles, you'll see why here in just a minute. But uh, notice we've got some stuff north of Scotland and um, and north of Ireland, kind of over that region of the UK that's getting hot. We've got this area here to the outside of uh, Norway. Uh, out over the water near uh, over the Norwegian Sea, another big uh, box here as well for an exercise. And then we get into this. You've got Sweden, very active, as well as Finland. Keep in mind that uh, we have some exercises that are very large in nature. And uh, the reason this is going to get really interesting is because there are more than uh, the usuals in the pool, so to speak. So let's get over and take a look at these news pieces. Okay. So NATO is launching uh, an Arctic exercise pledges to protect Finland, uh, but it involves countries like Norway, the UK, US, Sweden. They're all participating in this exercise. And um, yeah, anyway, this is kind of like laser tag. You got these little helmets on here. These are kind of funny, but uh, all right. I, anyway, I, I, let's just move on. Okay. <laughs> Here's why this is going to get interesting. All right. We already know that uh, this big uh, thing, I think it was called, let me just back up here one second because the name of this uh, exercise it's going to be under is ACE 23. It's supposed to have a multitude of fighters that are coming into the region for this event and uh, at a historic level of fighters, by the way. Okay. Which is mighty convenient. Um, if you're about to kick off a spring offensive because they're already in the region. Okay, now this is why this is going to get interesting. Russia begins their Baltic Sea drills one day after NATO. So the day after the NATO exercise stuff with Finland, Sweden, UK, US, all kick off in the same area. The Russians are also going to be doing their own drills. Not quite the same level, but pretty doggone close so the NATO exercise side is 6,000 personnel, 50 ships, and more than 45 aircraft taking part. Um, but then you get down here to Russia, and it's going to be 40 ships and boats, 25 aircraft, and around 3,500 personnel uh, in the exercise. And don't think for a second there aren't some subs in the area. And that will keep this thing looking jiggy uh, if it goes hot. So... Just uh, pay close attention because when you start to mix all these people up into uh, one particular region, i.e. this, uh, it is going to be a very tight squeeze uh, throughout all of this, right? <laughs> uh, keep in mind, this is Russia, right? You get on down a little bit. This is Finland right here. And, and you get down. This is the Baltic Sea. This is where Nord Stream was taken out right here. Um, and then this is Russia right here. So this whole area is, uh, is going to be rather busy, as is this area. 
So if they start to intermingle, intermix, they get into the same areas, um, you increase your opportunities for something to go awry. All right. Uh, so this is going to be an interesting next couple uh, days for sure. All right. Okay, we talked that. Let's get over here to this side of it. Now, the U.S. Army's Enduring Shield Air Defense Program is hit by a one-year delay. Really not what you want to hear. This is what they're talking about is this prototype uh, that is supposed to be fielded. They're saying it's supply chain issues. They can't get what they need. They can't get it to where they need. And so they're having to basically go in and change uh, the whole system-level testing process. Uh, they're going to have to streamline it in order to try and pull this thing back over to the left. Uh, but right now, it just keeps creeping to the right. And it looks like they're saying this will be ready in terms of prototypes around FY23, fourth quarter. So probably not going to be relevant in this world war. <laughs> okay, let's go here to this piece. Now, I, there were some videos floating around Twitter over the weekend that talked about, you know, this whole, uh, you know, piece. I don't know what it was all about, but... Looks like uh, Ukraine has officially opened taunting uh, or is openly taunting Russia. As Zelensky says, they are ready for their counteroffensive, and we strongly believe that we will succeed from Zelensky. Of course, his bank account is very fat, and uh, he uh, he's really got no skin in the game. He's not really fighting this. He's going to be sitting somewhere in his bunker, probably in Poland when all of this stuff goes on. But... Nonetheless, um, this is really going to be uh, an interesting set of events if it takes place because it's not going to be long before the United States gets pulled into this. Uh, there will be a multitude of uh, losses on the Ukrainian side because they just still, no matter what, don't have the numbers um, to basically take out Russia. And that is because, I mean, like we said the other day on our sit rep, Russia's still sitting at about 2,000 tanks. And the Ukraine is sitting at, uh, you know, maybe three, four hundred tanks. So uh, it's just very lopsided. So when this thing does kick off, it's uh, if and when it kicks off, it's going to be pretty bloody pretty quickly. And I do believe the U.S. will get engaged um, probably within uh, probably 10 days <laughs> of, of this counteroffensive. Uh, NATO and the U.S. will be fully engaged in this thing. So... Okay, now let's get over here to our flights. Take a look at the Canberra flights. Very light this morning. Again, uh, it doesn't seem like there's a lot going on around uh, around the world in terms of the Canberra flights, in terms of other things too. But uh, other than the big, massive exercise in the region, but um, in terms of positioning assets, we're going to get into all of this uh, a little further. These are 6.7s, 767s. So more than likely, these are moving uh, troops, more than likely. Okay, Biggs Army Airfield. Uh, this very, very quiet for today, but just notice that uh, we do have one coming en route from Fort Campbell, that is Kentucky, and then uh, from there it's headed over to Tucson. Now, we're going to keep continuing to monitor these smaller flights as they go around the United States, and the reason for that is because we're starting to see pictures and hearing rumors of National Guardsmen actually deployed in the airports across the United States. And uh, we're going to continue to watch that and see if that is the case or if they were just passing through. But uh, it is definitely not a usual occurrence to see them with their weapons out going through the, uh, the airports. So typically those are stowed. Um, so... We will uh, continue to watch that and monitor to see if, uh, if there is a trend here, okay? So let's move on to this. Over to Dover, let's see if we've got anything on the board. It looked like we've got one Coletta coming in. That's going to be a 747 coming in from Chicago. And uh, I don't see an outbound yet on the board for that particular one. And then a couple reach, not seeing anything that really catches my eye up here other than a couple C-17s. And then we go over to this one. This is going to be Ramstein, and also very quiet. And keep in mind, if you've got an exercise kicking off, you would think you'd see, you know, troops coming in. That means that they're already there. They're already pre-positioned. They're ready to go. So 
Now, RZE, let's take a gander at this. This is your Ford operating base. Uh, I do see one British plane coming in. And let me head on down. Remember, this is a, this is a mix of uh, commercial and military. So that's the only thing I see is one UK bird inbound. Um, yeah, uh, really, really light. So really not too much on there. It looks like it, uh, it lands and then takes right back off. And uh, I've got that little Army bird coming in from Wiesbaden, uh, Army Airfield, the little Duke 28. That, that's it. Man, that's a record low for uh, RZE. Remember, RZE is that forward operating base right across the border from Ukraine. So, so when Ukraine goes hot, uh, that's going to be the base they're going to be feeding everything out of, all right? For the most part. All right. Now, this is going to be National Cargo. Very active today. Uh, they are, we've got four of them up right now, all 747s, 400s. So the big question is, they move in people or they move in? Uh, let me fix my TV back here behind me. Sorry about this. It's, uh, I, you know, I heard that thing click behind me. So that is always perfect timing. All right. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, that's what happens when you go away from the old uh, manual green screen to a, uh, you know, a TV, a large TV behind you so that uh, it's all clear. But um, okay. So anyway, this is uh, National Cargo. Again, 747s could be more than likely this is not just troops, although it could be. Uh, but um, notice this one's coming out of Paris. That's uh, uh, flying out of Charles... Uh, uh, De Gaulle, and then, yeah, I mean, these are this is kind of an interesting deal. Uh, it could, like I said, the 747s typically are carrying the heavy equipment stuff. Uh, they've kind of reserved them for that, although they do carry the troops because we've got folks whose you know loved ones are on some of these flights. All right, Western Global again, 747 Anchorage to Los Angeles. Coming inbound to that location, a uh, pretty short hop for that one. Again, coming out of Asia. Omni, nothing on the board for Omni. Really unusual. Like I said, this is a pretty light day. We look at NATO. We've only got one, one flight that's, uh, that is taken off out of their place, uh, uh, Eindhoven, and it looks to be coming back. So it looked like it went out and is uh, doing a return trip. Same location. Uh, there was a second one up as well, but that's it. Only one NATO bird that's up. And then these are going to be your Brits. As you'll notice that uh, they are pretty active and busy. We've got stuff headed down here into, um, into Cyprus. We've got it, uh, let's see, over Europe. That one's actually climbing out. Yeah, so the Brits are still moving some folks around and definitely got some stuff coming out of uh, the U.S. as well. And then let's look at the Russians, and we've got two Ruskies up. So let's see. That one looks to be coming out of, well, I was going to say Sochi, but yeah, it is. It's coming out of Sochi. Now, this is uh, on the descent, and, uh, and then this one here looks to be a little bit further north. Now, keep in mind, these are, for the most part, dignitary birds, okay? So when you see them, it's kind of like our blue and whites, uh, but that's just a data point for you. We don't catch them very often, uh, but today we caught two, so let's go. All right, let's talk this news piece here. This is uh, kind of an interesting deal. Uh, sonic boom heard over Washington, D.C. as NORAD scrambles F-16s to intercept a unresponsive private jet that actually crashed uh, up in northern um, Virginia up in the mountains. So we're going to look closer at the data around this flight. Uh, more than likely what has happened, the same thing that happened with Payne Stewart is, um, you know, the aircraft took off and we'll, we'll actually get into uh, first. Well, let's just do this. We'll get into the data here. Uh, this is the aircraft. If you're not familiar with it, it is a um, Cessna Citation. It is a beautiful, very expensive aircraft. I'm going to hit refresh on this because the slide panel is not sliding. Uh, but you can see it's supposedly this thing flies like a fighter. It is 
just a beautiful. It's got the nice glass cockpit, uh, super duper high tech, very luxurious uh, and comfortable on the inside, um, but very responsive. And if you are not uh, used to flying this thing, uh, you know, it uh, you might have issues. So let's uh, one. Let's take a look. This is the flight they were talking about. And I'm going to show you some of the data that would indicate that uh, this pilot was uh, unconscious. Now, the aircraft actually autopilot, right, F was flying in here, uh, does its little turnaround right over Issa, uh, is where they believe it was headed. And then it started headed back, heading back this way. It ran out of fuel, and that's what, why it went down. Not uncommon. This aircraft can probably fly a pretty far distance. So this is not, you know, you would assume that uh, the fuel loads are pertinent to the air mission, so to speak, right? So they're not going to fill it up uh, max with fuel uh, to fly somewhere that's just right up, you know, uh, may only require half a load of fuel, right? So uh, more than likely, uh, they, they allowed some for, uh, for weather, et cetera, gave them a little extra. But um, 34,000 feet was the altitude. Now, the owner of this is uh, Encore Motors of Melver Melbourne Inc. So it came out of Melbourne, Florida. I will tell you, I went to pull this in this morning into my uh, database so that I could grab the flight data. And uh, I had to actually update my database to get this aircraft. When I did it off of um, probably two week old data, it wasn't listed, wasn't registered. So this is a fairly new aircraft. It just, uh, you know, got the N number assigned to it. And, uh, so that would indicate that this is probably someone that may not be familiar, you know, with this aircraft to the to the level that most people that have a lot of, uh, you know, seat time or stick time on it on this kind of airplane have. Now, uh, the thing that you're watching for, and it doesn't really show well on this, but that right there is the indicator where uh, exactly what you would see in an aircraft that basically uh, crash uh, crashes, right? You see the yellow line, and let me give you a better look at this because that is really an eye chart for you. Uh, but where are you? Here we go. See the yellow line there? The yellow is the speed and the and the green is the altitude. And, and in a typical uh, aircraft crash, especially one at altitude, 34,000 feet, which is, that's pretty high. When you see the two split, uh, it's because it's going nose down, right? So um, the airspeed you're going to see go up, the altitude straight down, and that's that's the indicator. Now, it doesn't show it all the way down. It just kind of stops it right there abruptly. But uh, if we get over here to uh, to Skyglass, you can really see it really tells a story. It, it lands up here in the corner of Tennessee, takes off, levels off. It flies up towards uh uh, ISIP, and then uh, clearly already unconscious before that happens uh, because it's on autopilot. Again, came out of Melbourne, Florida. But notice the altitude, the blue line just goes straight down. Uh, you can really see that that was a, a pretty big plummet, right? So um, I'll hit that again just so we can talk to it. But what happens is uh, these pilots or this, this aircraft has what they call a uh, rapid decompression, right? And so it will start to flow, or, or sorry, it'll start. It'll be flying even under autopilot, and all of a sudden, it uh, breaks the seal that causes uh, the out or the the interior of the aircraft to basically level out at the real true altitude at thirty five thousand feet. Well, at thirty five thousand feet, there is no oxygen up at that level, uh, or at least enough to sustain uh, you for a very long period of time. So people black out. You basically just pass out uh, from a lack of oxygen. And so that's what happens. You get a rapid decompression. Well, in, the, in commercial airlines, uh, you may be at 35,000 feet, but your cabin altitude is probably at like 450 or 1,200 feet, right? It's, it's very low. And when uh, the seal around a door or something uh, ruptures, uh, you see everything flying, debris flying through the, through the cabin, and they tell you to grab your mask and everything else. Well, when that starts to take place, the thing they don't tell you is that the pilot is uh, instantly putting that aircraft almost in a in a very uh, the angle of attack is is significant because he has got to get that airplane 
down below 15,000 feet as fast as he can and continue to get down. Um, and so uh, in the cockpit, they're, you're throwing on their halos or their, their, uh, which is, um, a Puritan Bennett, you know, oxygen, uh, mask that they put on, uh, you know, they train for this stuff, right? So what probably happened was this pilot was on autopilot. He's cruising along. There's people back in the back of the cabin. They lose, um, cabin pressure, uh, and it's, you only have a matter of seconds to react. And if you're not a seasoned pilot familiar with the aircraft, you're going to very quickly become unconscious, and that's that's likely what happened. Then the airplane will just keep flying until it runs out of fuel, and that's what you see with the blue line that goes straight down. So it uh, it more than likely just flew, ran out, and then just stalled and did its nosedive straight, literally straight down. So uh, it's unfortunate, it's sad to see that, um, but uh, that is very likely what what happened. So. Okay. Well, listen, I think we got through this sit rep here. Uh, hell, it's two or 30 minutes, roughly. So uh, we will uh, get back at it on, f- uh, well, let's see, it is Monday. So Wednesday. Yeah, we got a lot to cover. There's some interesting dynamics we're going to talk about on Wednesday um, in terms of just being prepped and what's going on in the world and how quickly things can change. And so that's what we're going to be talking about on Wednesday. So I hope you guys will tune in for the sit rep then because uh, it's going to be an interesting one. So All right, you guys uh, be safe out there. Keep that powder dry, and uh, we'll talk soon. God bless. Monkey out. Check out the latest gear and products at monkeyworksus.com.